Most people, you know, they major in minor things. They focus on stuff that doesn't matter. They know more about this celebrity going in and out of rehab than they do about their own personal development. But I look at, say, if you look at your body, without that, everything else is out the door. You don't want to be richest man in the graveyard. That's not going to do it. If there's energy, if there's vitality, if there's strength, it's going to show up in your relationship. It's going to show up in your business. It's going to show up in your life. That's an area you got to master. You can't dabble. It's too important. Emotions are everything. I mean, you got a ton of money, you got everybody loves you, and your primary emotions are pissed off and frustrated, then your life's pissed off and frustrated. It doesn't matter if you got a billion dollars or a million people loving you, your life is not great. Relationships, intimate relationships especially, it's where the most juice in life comes from, it's where the most pain comes from most people. It's worth mastering instead of dabbling. You know, really looking at what are you gonna do with your time? and mastering your time. Instead of having a checklist, you cross it all off, you can mistake movement for achievement. I, I wanna squeeze out of that time what matters, that creates value for me and for everyone I care about and love. What about your career or your business and the mastery of that instead of dabbling? Most, most businesses are dabblers. That's why they don't make it. 96%, you know, in any 10 year period of time, 4% make it. That doesn't even mean they're profitable. And it does not mean they're enjoying themselves, all right? Or they're getting anybody else to feel good. Really mastering money so that it's, it's not a question in your life. You can do and be and give and share as much as you want. You're not stressed about it. You live in a place of abundance. And then spiritually, really, I think, now I don't tell people what to believe spiritually, but I believe that ultimately, whatever you believe, you gotta live it, and it should lead to growing and giving. If you're growing, you feel alive. If you're giving, you feel 10 times more alive. And I think if someone can celebrate and give, then that spiritual state. So to me, those are the areas I look at mastering. You know, business, for sure, but it's the areas of life that matter most. And most of what we spend our time doesn't make people feel fulfilled. That's why the average person is not fit and healthy. The average person is not in a relationship where they have tremendous passion. They, you know, I'm not a dummy. I'm not a positive thinker. I know the truth. The average person is not successful in business. The average person is not earning what they want to earn. But you know what? Very few people have those things, but a few do. A few are happy, fulfilled, spiritually alive, financially strong, their business is growing, they have passionate love affairs, and I'm obsessed with finding the few who do and find out what they do different and teach them to everybody. Everyone's gonna measure themselves differently because everyone values things differently. Some people value success or significance. Some people value love more. Some value just basic levels of certainty. Um, so when I look at the specific metrics, I really look at, uh, metrics of what are the things that need to be measured to know if your life is going to work or not. So I look at it as our whole lives are guided moment to moment by the state we're in. Learning how to change your state, not bullshit, not fake, but to go from pissed off, frustrated, freaked out to back in your center or creative or uh, determined or something that's going to move you forward. It's going to create a better quality of life for you and others. That's a critical skill set. So moment to moment, our life's controlled by our states. Yep. You know, if you're in an angry state, you're gonna respond differently than if you're feeling playful. But what controls those states long-term is your model of the world, your worldview. And I look at that as having, as a metric, three things that I look at. I look to see first, what are the targets you're after? The target is, everybody has, the, everyone has different goals and dreams and desires. But as I travel around the world to 100 countries, I started going, we should have seen the same problems What's underneath it? I began to see that there are these same six human needs that we all have, the same needs. We all have a need for certainty, that we can avoid pain and we can have some pleasure, some comfort. We all need uncertainty. We need variety or we feel dead inside. If you're totally certain you're bored, if you have total variety, you're like freak out. And it's not a balance. It's learning which of these you need more as a person. Everyone's developed a different set of values in that area. Um, need of, the need for significance, to feel unique, special, important, the need to feel loved, the need to grow, and the need to contribute. Some people value certainty at the top of their list. That's their center of their target. I don't want to do anything unless I know it's going to work. I don't want to do anything unless it's the same. If you change anything, they freak out. If certainty is the number one thing on your list, everyone has the same needs, but if it's number one, I know how your life's going to be. I can predict the direction of your life and therefore the destination to some extent. 